Hey guys, RC here. We're back with Bullbound College Football, our American football journeyman save. We are starting season three with Louisiana Lafayette, the Raging Cajuns, uh, my alma mater. And we have won our first game of the season, 13 to 7. And so let's go through the box score 23 to 15 on first downs, uh, 10 of 22 on third down conversions, over 400 yards for the game. 25 carries for 53 yards, only 2.1 yards a rush. Remember, past seasons we've talked about it. A really good running team should be in the 4.5 yards plus per carry. Uh, passing 39 out of 66. So if we double that 39, that puts us to 78. And that would be to get to 50%. Anything less than 78 is to the positive. So we are well over 50% completion for the game. Very happy with that. Only 5.3 yards a pass. Now that's due to a lot of things. Talent being first and foremost. In my multiplayer leagues that I use this for this uh, game plan, uh, you know, I'm shooting for six and a half to, to seven and a half. Uh, and really hoping for eight yards per pass attempt. And remember, that yards per pass calculates off of every pass thrown. So all 66 passes, including the 20, is that 27 uh, incompletions that give you zero yards for that one attempt. So not too bad, not too bad at all. Uh, then uh, let's see, we were only one of two in the red zone two of three on field goals, so maybe we need to dial that back a little bit. Uh, we hit a 45-yarder, a 22-yarder, and we had a 25-yard touchdown pass. So that is positive. We were two-point favorites coming into this one. Player of the game was uh, Navarro, Ohio's uh, cornerback. Four pass defended and four tackles. So good week for him in the secondary. All right, we move into week two. We're back home. We are taking on Rice out of uh, the Houston, Texas area, where I now live. And we have uh, Williams is our primary player. Olsen is our primary defensive player. They are a run heavy. So if we look at the preview, uh, 238 yards passing, 52 yards rushing, also three catches for 85 yards for him. We are odds-on favorites both ways, offense and defense. They have the edge in special teams. So I want to go in and check our email and do all this stuff. I will be back after I finish this. All right, we've done our, uh, our tutoring for the week. Uh, the hours, we used them all because we had a big list. Uh, but we are one-point favorites. Let's see what happens. And it is a shootout. Uh, we actually had the lead after three quarters, 24 to 20, and they score three touchdowns in the fourth quarter, including a pick six by Dale Chapman that gave them the lead that they would not relinquish. Oh, that is disappointing. Uh, we actually had more first downs. We had much more in the way of yardage. Now, they, they had 143 yards on the ground, three and a half yards of carry. Now, you see, we got to 4.7, 45 out of 72 passing. So, again, 90 would be 50%. So, we're well over that 50% threshold, 481 yards through the air, 6.7 yards of pass. So, much better this game. Two interceptions, including the costly interception return. That gave them a touchdown. 409 return yards. Four kickoff returns. Six punt returns. That is 50 yards per kickoff return. That's pathetic. And about 13 yards on the punt return. Not bad. But the, the kickoff returns. And then, uh, yeah, 74 yards on the one interception. Not good. We missed a field goal again. Four, perfect four for four on extra points. And three of four in the red zone. So the missed field goal, <coughs> I am assuming. So Williams, 38 out of 58. Seven of 14 for Smith. Williams, four for 46 on the ground and a touchdown. 
And there you see Fleming, our big receipt, our tight end from last year, eight catches, 114 yards and a score, seven for 112. Uh, the good thing here, no drops. So that's very positive that we're not seeing drops. Uh, let's see. Fleming had a fumble. Bolin had a fumble that was lost. Brown had a fumble that was lost. So it looks like his long was 33. So I may want to adjust that this game. All right. Well, let's jump into the emails. Now you can see I've already used all the academic hours but the game has still put some in for me. And that was that kind of little bug cheat that I told you guys about last season. Uh, Goodwin is injured. He's questionable, so he'll probably be out. So let's see about fixing that. All right, we are going to have to do something. Remember I said last year you kind of want three players. So we only got two at defensive end. And one of those guys is hurt. So we're going to go into our defensive tackles, and we're going to pull out Farrell, and we're going to put him in. Actually, I'm going to put Farrell in it on one side, Lloyd in on the other, and uh, that way we'll have uh, we'll have three deep in case there's an injury. Now, if we were playing a four-three where we had two defensive tackles, I would want to maybe put a defensive end in here. We're playing a 3-4, just due to lack of depth. So that's good. Oh, and shoot, I didn't save it. Damn it. All right, let me redo that. All right, we'll save those changes there. And we're going into, I'm not going to change any of the game plans for this week. Uh, we are seven-point favorites on the road against Idaho. We are the number 21-ranked offense in the country and the number 13-ranked defense. We just need to get better at that. All right, we win this one 21 to 18. Again, we give up more points in the fourth quarter. So that tells me that we're struggling to um, maintain any edge that we have during the early part of the game. And this could be due to just the depth chart and having players that just aren't as good in the second and third strings that are playing more later in the game. Uh, it could be just, you know, it could be any number of things. Um, so let's take a look. We dominate first downs again. Uh, we dominate total yardage. 23 carries for 12 yards. Basically, we're just keeping them honest here. Uh, 30 out of 55. So again, just, you know, just north of that 50% mark. Uh, that we like to see, 7.9 yards per pass, nine sacks. So that's a little bit more of a, of a problem. And I did not change my field goals. So we were 0 for 3 for field goals. So got to make a mental note to change that. Uh, taking a look down at the stats, 25 of 42. Smith, 5 of 13. So what we've done in our in our depth charts is we have Williams the senior number 1, Smith is a true freshman number 2, and we have the playing time at 80% on first, second and third down and then uh, 100% for Williams on fourth down. So that's why Smith is getting a handful of snaps each game. But remember, he needs to play in order to get better. Williams is graduating at the end of this season. Smith has got to be the guy we turn to, and he's going to need reps uh, in games to get better and have his ability rating go up. So uh, anyway, 6 for 50 for White. Uh, White had 6 catches, 153 yards. Uh, and a touchdown. That was a big game for him. Fleming has another good game. And Emery, four for 41. A uh, couple of drops in this one, so we do see that still being a little bit of an issue, which with our talent is not a surprise. 0 for 3. All right. Let's go in and do that right now. I'm going to drop that to 40 yards. Because evidently 45 is just uh, asking a little bit more. We have an off week this week, 
So let's go through that, and then we'll play Middle Tennessee uh, to end out the episode. All right, we're at home playing Middle Tennessee State. We're 2-1 and one on the season. Uh, number 15 ranked defense in the country, number 20 ranked offense in the country. Uh, I've gone in now that we've had our three pre, uh, preseason games, basically, uh, but the three non-conference games, uh, we've actually had a good run, a winning record through those. Uh, so now I've gone in, I've tweaked our game plan, I've looked at the plays, I've taken out the ones that aren't working. I've adjusted the ones that are working very well. I've added in a few new plays into the playbook to try those out. So let's see what happens today. And it is a victorious start to conference action, 42 to 28 over Middle Tennessee State. We are now three and one on the season, halfway to the magic six number and a solid start towards getting beating uh, equaling or beating our four and three conference mark of past years. All right, so 32 first downs to 17. We almost doubled them up there. They did get 400 yards against us, which is the most we've given up all season. We did put up 533 of our own, almost 100 yards rushing, 36 out of 51. So that is well over the 50% threshold. Uh, what is that? Now I got to do math. 70.5%. That's stellar. That would be perfectly in the range of, uh, of any quarterback competing for the Heisman Trophy. If I could get 70%, I would be very, very happy. Uh, 8.6 yards a pass. That's right up there at the, at the high end of what I would want with uh, the passing attack that I'm running, which is predominantly a short passing affair. Uh, three sacks, three interceptions. So that's, that's, you know, you put the ball up a lot, you're going to throw a lot of interceptions. That is the drawback. Uh, still missed two field goals, even at the shorter distances. So that's pretty pathetic. Uh, let's see. Our score is an eight yard pass, a one yard run, a 55 yard pass, a five yard run, and a, uh, a 27-yard pass, a four-yard run. So that's good. Williams was 32 of 42. Smith, four out of nine. He had two of the interceptions, so he threw nine passes. Six of them were completed. Just two of them went to the wrong team. Uh, Williams, nine of 64 to lead the team in rushing. 13 for 33 for White. And Emery, we talked about Emery before the first game. I thought he had the best hands and route running ability. So eight catches, 113 yards, but only one yak. So, you know, he basically, he caught the ball, got hit, and fell down. Uh, White, six for 101. So there we go. All in all, I'm going to say that is really good. Let's go in and look at, well, let's save here so we don't lose anything. I tend to try to save again after every week. All right. So Williams, 64.9%, 1,260 yards, six touchdowns, four interceptions, and a 126.85 rating. Smith has a 126.8, three touchdowns, three interceptions, but three, three, uh, three touchdowns on uh, only 26 completions. Under 50%, though. So, again, normally, depends on where I'm at team-wise. If I had two quarterbacks like this with these numbers and I was at Texas, Florida, USC, if I was competing for big conferences, playoffs, national championships, I'd shut Smith down in a heartbeat. Now, keep in mind, he'd probably have slightly better ratings, right? Um, just, just a little bit. Um, but again, I wouldn't play the backup. I'd set everybody to 100. I'd set my quarterback to 100%. My number one guy would play every snap of the season. Um, you know, unless, let's say I was coming into a game against, you know, one of the first three cupcake games that a big team normally plays. You know, you might want to go with a 70, a 70% 70 there. Uh, you know, to give give your backup some reps, 
and limit the time on the field. On the flip side, that may be the game where that extra 30% gives him the stats to be in competition for the Heisman or something to to that effect. But uh, anyway, so Williams, you can see he's doing better, you know, a little over one to one. Again, you would love to see a three to one is what you'd like in touchdown to interceptions. Uh, Rushing wise, Williams, 20 carries, 152 yards. So uh, you remember last season, we knew he was a pretty decent runner. We put a couple of running plays. So there are those running plays still in the playbook. Uh, but we've really gotten away from the running. It's it's very, very heavily oriented towards the pass. Uh, Fleming is our number one receiver with 31 catches, 363 yards, and one of a couple of receivers with two touchdowns. Now, I do want to look at, let's look at our roster. And this is sorted by... I'm going to sort by position. So you can see Smith has improved from the beginning of the season from, you know, he's now a 2-5 quarterback. So he started to make some improvements. So I think we've made the right call with him to give him a few snaps. Now, as we get deeper into the season, if we continue to win games, if we're really in contention for the Sun Belt Championship, uh, I may shelf him at that point uh, and go with Williams 100% uh, across the board. Uh, looking at running back, well, let's see. Let's look at our overall guys. So, you know, you can see here just from the beginning of the season, now we've got a group of yellow players, fours and better, and we've got a large group of orange players, which are twos and threes, Whereas at the start of the season, you know, down to about here was orange or a couple of yellows and oranges. And then from, you know, like here down was all red. So you can already see some improvement just in the course of the season. And if we sort this by freshman, so you can see uh, Smith, uh, Barry, a cornerback up to a 2 4. These are our red shirt guys. Uh, down here, these are all of our true freshmen that we redshirted this year. Uh, we had the transfer guy coming in for next season, of course. So you know we're we're seeing some improvement in our in our players' abilities, in our skill levels, and that's giving me good hope that you know we have recruited. They're not going to be great out of the box, you know, as, as brand new freshmen that you, you know, you open that, that recruiting package and, oh my God, look at the freshmen I've got. Uh, you know, they do need to get some, the training and then the playing time and then another season of training and playing time. So that's why it's really beneficial if you can redshirt players. And at the smaller programs like this, you have the luxury of doing that. At a Texas teams that are top teams in their, you know, the power five conferences, uh, power teams in the country, Ohio States, Alabama's, you can't redshirt those players because you'll lose a lot of them to, uh, to transfers. So, you know, it, it is what it is, but uh, I'm very, very reassured about our development, how that's panning out now. Uh, taking a look at status at this point. Uh, we do have a uh, questionable four to six weeks. Phillips, one of our defensive tackles. Uh, we do have one player suspended, which could be worse because we had a lot of guys uh, out earlier. Uh, probable, doubtful, probable. So none of these, you know, Bolin is not one of our main guys. Moore is one of our depth at defensive end, which is why we had to move a defensive tackle into that spot. But he'll be coming back. And, uh, you know, Bolin and Goodwin, not, not the big guys that we were really leaning on uh, in, in our top two or three. You know, we had the top two, then we looked at Emory. So I think it's a great start to the season. We have put up some serious points, two games over 40. And we've actually had a couple of really solid defensive games. We've had a couple of uh, clunkers on the defensive side of the ball, four-plus touchdowns in two of those matches. 
So that is going to be something that we'll want to keep an eye going forward. And honestly, there's just not a lot that we can cling to on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, but anyway, 12 and 16 all time record, three and one this year. And taking a look at the standings, uh, we are one of four teams that are unbeaten in the conference so far. We'll see what happens next episode, guys. Have a good one. Hit the like button, subscribe for more daily content here on the channel. And let me know down in the comments what you think about the start to the season. Have a good one. Bye.